everyone, my name is Bo, and I have a John Deere with no hood. Alright, so let's dig into this. If you're like me, and any other John Deere owner that does not house their John Deere inside of a garage, the hood is probably busted and cracked and no longer on your tractor. Now, it's a little embarrassing at first, but then when you finally get out there and see that there's a ton of other people where these hoods have just crumbled to pieces, and the, all these other dads are out there driving around with no hoods, you get less embarrassed. For forewarning, I am in John Deere country, okay? Headquarters is maybe a 20 minute drive over in Illinois. So there's John Deere's everywhere. What I'm gonna do is blasphemous. Now, I also have a Mustang that I plan on putting an LS in. I guess blasphemy is my middle name, but we're gonna do this. I'm gonna show you what I've done, uh, show you how you can do it too. So this is probably what most of you are seeing. Your hood probably looks like this. Mine was started off with daughter wrecking it into something, but these pieces, it's just brittle. Okay, you can just snap it right in half and then it's just destroyed. So now if you go online and try to find any of these, you're gonna be looking at three, 400 bucks and it's probably ready to crack by itself. Either has chips out of it. You probably spend around $500 for a hood that's think aftermarket or still John Deere, but it's, you still have that hood. So here is what I'm gonna be working on. All right, I got this sucker for free. Now the thing with the Craftsman hoods is they're metal. Now that front part is still plastic, but for some reason, Craftsman knew how to make it so even if they get sun damage, they are not gonna bust apart on you. Now granted, all this stuff works real good. I'm gonna paint it up John Deere Green just so I don't look even more redneck than I need to. But I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna adapt this to that lawnmower. So here's gonna be a quick before of what the tractor's looking like without the hood. And here is what it's looking like with the Craftsman hood just sitting on it right now. But this is actually very handy for mocking up how it was gonna be. So yeah, there's some gaps in there, but once I paint that green, it's gonna look a bit better. At least it looks like it's got something. Let's hit a little front view. Now, digging into this, those tabs right here, those are where it mounts on the Craftsman. Now they hold themselves up perfect right there. I'll kind of show you how I fabbed up the part that I did. So here's the thing. I do have access to a laser scanner and I plan on doing more with that in the future, but this way is kind of simpler, just went back old school. First thing I did was kind of level up the old mount and just use a little channel lock just to keep it because it will, it will fall down a little bit more on this side. And then I just went at it with a piece of cardboard and I don't even know if you can see, let's get sunlight. Made some marks. Now this would slide up back inside of here so I can mark all the holes. Let's see if we can get a shot up in there not very good but you can see there's a metal part of the craftsman hood where i'm going to attach at now i will be having to drill only holes in the hood part the plan was was to make it so if someone else was having to do this they're going to just reuse this piece and then just hook it up onto here so let me show you what i came up with for a 3d print so print wise made this piece right here Let's do a real quick showing of the fusion work just to kind of show you a little bit more in depth of what it looks like. And then we'll show it to you on the tractor. All right, let's jump into Fusion 360. This isn't going to be a tutorial on how to model this. It's just more going to be a little overview of the evolution of this part being created. Uh, with my cardboard that I was using at the tractor, tracing out where all the holes and mounts all line up to, I just translated all those markups to a sketch inside of here. From there, we just extrude the part out to give us our thickness of it. And then on the backside, we do one more extrusion to give us that extra width of where the Craftsman hood is going to be mounting on. From there, we just add a little sketch for some holes that we're going to need through it and then extrude those out. Now, adding filleting is recommended on 3D prints. It's gonna get uh, rid of some of the stresses that can happen into it. And it's also gonna just give you a little bit nicer of a print, just easing those edges. Now, if anything does happen to this in the future, my guess is it's probably gonna be this connection right here. 
um, could end up breaking at which point I'll come back in and I'll kind of beef up a little bit more of a support in this corner right here so next what I ended up doing was modeling the bolt itself one option is to try to model the threads inside of each one of these holes but I figured that was just going to be a little bit more difficult so I created a separate component which is going to be the bolt from the John Deere tractor uh, just using some dial calipers at home just to measure the pitch uh, I could actually get that all correct on here and then it was just a matter of doing a couple tests uh, with just some simple 3D prints to make sure that it was indeed going to work before I printed out a full part. Get a couple more screws added into here. Now before I start joining these I did go through and start placing some fillets around the holes especially since this side right here is going to be against the bed you will get some elephant's foot on your print which is going to close up that little bit of hole now so that fillet on this side is, is going to help with that it's going to make it so it doesn't close up as much on you from there we're going to move all these bolts into place now it was about at this point right here i realized that i needed to get this other side mirrored over right now because if i take the time to put the threads in here it's not going to work well because when I mirror it, those threads are all going to be incorrect and your bolts will not go in. I mean, they will with an impact, but not how we want them to go in. So now that that second part is made, we get the bolts into place. And you can see here that I just start creating even more bolts for the other side. So these are all iterations of that first bolt. This is a very nice concept because if I needed to adjust this to go bigger, uh, if I wasn't getting my clearances that I needed, I could come into just the first one and it will change all of these and I can just re-export the STL out. So I get those all in place and then the very last move that I make is the combine, which isn't just combined, it will also do a cut action. Uh, so when I do that, we'll actually turn on an analysis here and flip this around. If I shut off all these screws, you can see that it modeled that actual thread inside of there like i said after a bit of testing i was able to get a good fit on there your results may vary on your printer depending on how accurate yours is um, but for the most part this gives us all the clearances we need without busting out the plastic for those bolts and that is basically how we got our part let's go back to the tractor now and we'll show you the final 3d print of what i got off we're not going to show the actual 3d printing process that's just pretty straightforward so let's see it hitting the tractor okay so now actually on the tractor we can see we got the holes and they're going to line up now the other thing i did was the screws that you pull out of the john deere hood will thread right into there and you probably saw in the video before from fusion that how it's already threaded with the plastic. Now I've added little ledges so some of the weight will actually bear down right there. So that's the tractor side. When we get over to the hood side, there's another little lip and you're actually going to place that up against the steel and you're gonna mark and you're gonna drill your holes there. Now the spacing that you need for these holes is going to be the space basically between when you flip these up, since that's the out, since that's the outside right there of this plastic. Let's get a view from this way. Right there. What you'll do is you'll just flip both of these up right there and right here, and we'll just measure between them. So both of those just kind of being held up right there. We'll just measure inside to inside. And we are about, let's call it 15 and seven eighths. Or we can even go 16 because these can go wider. So we'll probably just do 16. Your numbers may vary. I don't know. This is obviously just a DIY project. So use those if you want, but here's how you verify it. Now back on the hood side, if, you got 16 inches what you're going to do is you're going to actually just put this across and you're going to center that 16 inches inside of these two rails right here so let's say we're about right there and then what will happen is then so the outside of this bracket will end up about right there a little bit of room for wiggle and it'll be ready to bolt up so next i'm going to just get the holes drilled for both sides of this right here. 
All right, you got opposite pieces here. You're gonna make sure that the flanges are towards the inside of the hood. All right, and there we go. All right, so there's those mounted up. Just went with some one inch long quarter 20 bolts. Now I didn't have any quarter 20 washers. I had some 516, so those work out just fine. You wanna put the washer to kind of spread out the load and just snug them down a bit. Also got a lock washer in there. Next step after that's gonna be, you pull off your old ones. Now if you just rotate up, there's a certain spot where they then pop off. We'll then bring these over and these will end up screwing on right there now like i said this takes the factory hardware looks like this 10 millimeter socket and you'll just snug those on by hand don't use impact or anything like that so i'll get those on next okay and there you have it they're on there the hood should just go back on with the John Deere mounts. Now the nice thing about 3D printing is if this fails, I'll just beef it up in whatever whatever area breaks. So I'm gonna post this on Thingiverse, probably printables also. If there's any updates to it, you'll end up seeing it on there. My guess is it'll probably be just a little bit more beefed up in this area. I was actually kind of thinking I probably should have added a fillet across here and really strengthen that piece up right there. But we will mount it up next and see how it looks. Okay, so now a view from this side here. So obviously that fit on there just fine. Now debated getting rid of let's get under here and see it so bright out i can't even see it right there the tabs those are still resting against the metal might end up grinding those off but you can see the plastic is holding itself on there not looking too bad let's pop top of the hood it's just resting on that plastic right there so You can always do something so with it fully open bouncing it a bit you can see it's holding just fine now i will work on getting the lights hooked into the wire and i never use the lights to be honest but i don't know who's mowing at night but you can get those hooked up and it holds it all in place pretty good Okay, so a little final thoughts on it. I think it turned out pretty decent considering I got it for free and it was not a three to $500 hood. Now, goal for the future here is probably another video where I paint it up John Deere green, maybe get rid of the, not maybe, I will get rid of the Craftsman stickers, possibly come up with some sort of stupid name since it's no longer a John Deere or a Craftsman, John Crafts, I don't know. We'll find out what to do there, but biggest thing is I really want to just take my hand at painting that and see if I can get it all to come out real good. So I hope this helps one of you in the future. Have a good one. Ah yes, that other stuff. Click and subscribe, I, not that big yet, so subscribe please. But I will post the Thingiverse and Printables location of this printout in the description and then i think that's it give me a like thanks